sexual passion, I totally agree with you. It's a function of newness. If you keep doing the same old sexual thing exactly the same every time, it's going to get less and less interesting. So why does passion fade in relationships? Is it inevitable or is it a sign that there's really a problem underneath? Yes, there's a sign there's a problem underneath. <laughs> and yet it's inevitable for most people because they don't have the relationship skills to consciously sustain passion. See, if you expect it to be like in the beginning, you didn't have to do anything in the beginning. It was newness that stimulates the brain chemical of passion, which is called dopamine. And newness is what allows you to feel passion. So in a simple place, if your relationship supports you in being authentic as a, as a person growing, then passion can grow if your relationship supporting you and being your authentic self. Sexual passion, I totally agree with you. It's a function of newness. If you keep doing the same old sexual thing exactly the same every time, it's gonna get less and less interesting. When passion refers to love, feelings of affection, that's a question of how much negative and how much positive. If you're doing negatives, criticizing, focusing on what you don't like about your partner, the, the passion, the affection goes down. If you're focusing on, focusing on appreciation, agreeing, enjoying, gratitude, then that affection builds up. If our intention is to control, then um, we're gonna lose the passion because nobody likes to be controlled. And we manipulate each other and it feels terrible and down goes the passion. But if our intention is to learn about loving ourselves and each other, then there's the newness, there's the growth. It's there continuously because there's always things to learn. It's the love that creates the sexual passion as well as the harmony in the relationship and the equanimity. After seven years, I remember my wife changed my life with this one statement. After seven years, after sex was spectacular off the chart, 4th of July occasionally, and afterwards I used the interviewer. I said, that was really quite fantastic. That was as good as in the beginning. And her response was, that was better. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And she says, in the beginning, we didn't really know each other. But now you've seen the best of me and the worst of me, and you still adore me. That's what makes sex great. And that's where I learned as a man that sex was way much more than just the physical act but it was also this emotional connection of knowing who you're making love to rather than fantasizing something you saw in a porno movie. One of the things people who are in long-term relationships often drop is what happens in dating, which is playfulness. Yes. It's flirtation. It's having fun. It's exploring. And you can do that at any phase of a relationship. Right. Here's some practical skills in order to assist bringing him into the table, which is looking at this weekend, what are some of the things that she'd like to do, things that she enjoys doing, and let them know, next weekend, this is happening, this is happening, and ask, would you take me? So important to ask men, invite him into that. And often men will go, oh, I'm not really into that. You go with a girlfriend. Then what you do is you turn around and you go, I could go with a girlfriend, but it's so much nicer when you're there. It's to invite him in and use, we call, I call them feminine skills, to motivate men to bring them out. Women have been doing this for thousands of years. We just have to upgrade those skills. And all of that is the opposite of complaining. Absolutely. Complaining kills a relationship. But people who don't complain, what I see is women losing passion. This is your traditional woman who learned never complain and therefore she suppressed all of her emotions inside. There wasn't communication. So it's good not to complain, but it's also important to be open and sharing, but learn to share in a way that doesn't come across as a complaint. Well, the other thing too, is that many women will say, well, he's not asking me, so he's not interested, right. instead of saying, I'm gonna take the initiative That's it. here. That's, exactly. That's right. Yeah. That's Bravo. Right. Yeah. yeah, she's got the light and she's gotta use it. And, and, you know, and he wants that underneath when she does it in a non-demanding, loving, and caring way. That's the challenge, learning how to do that. And that's why we need education. You know, my soulmate seminars, it's like women get, men get to hear what women are saying quite often. When women talk to their husbands, he gets defensive. But when he hears other women saying it, this is a whole value of community and sharing, support groups, being able to hear other people's experience, or having a coach who will tell you their experience. See, that's the great thing about coaching is you get, you get a back and forth. Often with therapy, sometimes it's always just the, the patient and you're not gonna say anything. So what we need more than, therapy's good. We also need education. 
So does lack of passion in a relationship have to mean that it's over or that there's a problem? Not necessarily. There's a lot of things that you can do to bring the passion back in your relationship no matter how long you've been together.